Okay, we're at Astley Green Colliery and we're just looking at the headgear above the shaft and this is pretty much the type of shaft um, and headgear that you'd have at Moston if you looked in 1950. Not much difference really. Winding house and a cage and a lattice girder. This little train then for ah, this little train. It had a couple of names. It's called a paddy train. Some people call it a mail train. And it took you to the uh, cold face as long as it was horizontal. The face obviously you could only go on a straight line. And um, it's a great method of transport. Really. It was like being on a fairground. You just got in with your mates, sat there, and got took for the ride. Brilliant. What's this tunnel we're in, Paul? This is a, this is a, looks like a main gate on the way into the com, uh, colliery workings. This would be called in by as you go in and out by as you're coming out. It's pretty standard size this for the beginning of the colliery workings. Then obviously as you got in further it got narrower. But they were a lot quite bigger than this actually. It's quite big more, isn't it? Yeah, and there were some narrower. Mm. This is about, so I'd say this is about standard size. Mm. There's the ones at Agecroft and there was workshops down below. It was huge. Absolutely huge places, absolutely unbelievable places. And all you'd see in the distance, which you can't see here, is lights going that's fading away. Right. And going along. Nothing it's is. like as wide as a road. Yeah, oh yeah. You've got two locomotives in here. Uh, conveyor belt. Stuff that you'd have had a conveyor belt in here, thinking of call out. Or a man rider, we call a man rider, where men jump on a conveyor belt and get tucked in. You'd have probably a railway, probably in and out or two. Right. So, uh, you know, Amazing. Yeah. And you can see about, I was saying about the stint stick the other day. If I had it with me, I've got this stint stick. Yeah. You can see this length there. Yeah. 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 The length. So each one's a yard apart. Yeah. About, about the length of that stick. Yeah. So that's how we measured it to keep the length of the used at Agecroft. You can see here that this is a cutting machine. There's a tooth, one of the teeth of the cutters. All the rest have disappeared somewhere. This is what cut into the coal. It's connected here. From what was stood on here, it would have had a panzer on it, what was called a panzer. It looked like a trapped uh, chain. Cut the coal off there, push it onto the panzer, and it would go along the panzer. The coal Um, these are what you call chunks, walking props, hydraulically powered. And these were what you worked from behind when you were cutting the coal on the face, which was just on the left hand side here. And the other face was on the right hand side. So this is, this is where you worked in between the chocks. As you walked, the hydraulic chocks walked on their own hydraulically. A bit like the motion of a robot and its two legs like that. And as you cut the coal, the chocks went with you along the development. Amazing really. Took a lot of uh, manual work out of it for the modern miners. Because years ago, you had to use wooden props and metal props, and this was all done for you. Amazing. About the uh, this is like a Dosco heading machine, the borer which went into the coal face and cleared the face for the next development which would include ripping, which is doing the roof doing the size and preparing the face for the uh, cutting machines the and cutting machine like that one over there and putting the plops in, props in you can see it's a pretty strong piece of metal and it used to replace the teeth by unscrewing them and putting new ones in every now and then because you can see from these that they've been pretty badly mauled Oh, is that, that seems quite sharp to me. Yeah, it's probably sharpened up on the, on the rocks and uh, yeah. everything there. Yeah. This, you can imagine this whirring around at a yeah. magnificent rate. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, 
these are the selection of pumps that we use to get water out of the pits. You see some uh, artesian well ones, and there's some over here. Some submersible pumps were dropped in the, the sumps of the pits to get all the coal out, uh, the water out. A lot of them made in Manchester. There's one from John Shaw in Salford. Tipton, which is near most uh, Wolverhampton, I think. Now, these are an absolute lifesaver in the pits because obviously those pits are full of water. If these were turned off in a lot of pits, it'd be inundated with water in minutes, hours, and that'd be the end of them. You can see the John Shaw one here, the Salford. The factory only closed it about three years ago. It used to be in uh, Greengate, Salford. I remember it well. by the side of the canal by Anthony Bridge Colliery. This is the Bridgewater Canal, which was the M1 of its time, and this is where the um, steam crane from the colliery used to load the barges to take to the various factories in Lee, Manchester and further afield. Not much left now, but it's a bit of a different view than it was probably hundred years ago. It'd been a lot of muck and grime, a lot of hard labour being done here now.